Hello and welcome to the seventh video in this tutorial on how to make a pong game. In this tutorial we will fancy things up a bit. A lot of the things we will be doing in this video are fairly optional. You know, you could just leave it as pretty much the original pong clone at the previous episode, but we will be making it just a little bit better in this video. So let's get started by adding something to make it look a little bit graphically better. And that's just change the background colour every time a paddle hits the ball to a random bright colour. So to do that we will create a solid sprite for the background. So just where you have your variables, right, their background, colon, so is of a type flex sprite, just like that. And then above all of this, just put background equals new flex sprite, just like that. And don't forget a semicolon. And so we're not going to be extending this sprite like we did with paddle and ball because it's fairly simple. It's just showing a solid color. So now we can add the background to the screen. Just like that. Now we need to fill it in with a color. And so let's do that here. Background dot make graphic. And then for the width, it's the screen width, so flex g dot width. For the height, it's flex g dot height. And for the color, um, make sure you have imported flexor dot util dot flex color. We are actually going to set it to be white. Now the reason for this is because uh, when we create it, even though um, the ball and the paddle are white, you'd think that we'd want the background to be something like black. But we don't, because this is the original colour, and then we tint this. You can't tint black. Um, the maths behind it just doesn't work. Um, but you can tint white. So let's change the tint to be black. So background dot colour, so that's like the tint, equals flex colour dot white. Now if you run this at the moment, you won't notice any differences whatsoever to the game, because... Um, you know, it's just a white background just like we had before. But what we can actually do now is we can change that colour while the game is running. So here it's just white. Um, oh, yeah, we needed to set this to black. We tint it black so that we can see the white paddles. That's what I meant to do. So we create a white image, but then we tint it black. If we created a black image, we wouldn't be able to tint it. So now when the ball hits the paddle, let's change it to be a random vibrant colour. So to do that, we're going to need uh, help from a class that Hexflexel has written called uh, FlexColorUtil. So just up here, write import flexcolorutil. What this class offers are powerful functions that let you manipulate colours to get colours that look nice together, convert between different colour schemes, all those sorts of things. But we're just going to use it to generate a random vibrant colour. So just start by writing background.color, so the tint of the background, equals flex colour util dot make from HSB8, don't use ARGB, um, there's a reason why, and with HSBA, we tell it the hue, so that's like red, green, orange, blue, white, whatever. The saturation, um, so that's how vibrant it looks, and then the brightness, which is, you know, dark red, light red, medium red. So we want the hue to be different, but we want to leave the saturation and brightness the same, so that the colour, no matter what hue, whether blue or orange, looks bright. So let's pick a random hue. A hue is a number between 1 and 360. So to generate a random number, we have to import another hexflexel class. So just write here, import random. This class gives us access to lots of random functions. So here, we just have to write for the first argument, which is the hue, flexrandom.int range. This will give us a random integer, so number, between the first number we give it and the second. So 
we want it to be between 1 and 360. Now for the saturation, so how vibrant and um, strong the colour looks, we will set it to be 0 0.7, that's out of 0 and 1. And the brightness, we will set this to be 0 0.7. You can adjust them if you want it to be lighter or darker, but I think this will work well. Now when we run our game, you will see... When the ball hits the paddle, it changes to be another um, random vibrant colour. So all of these, as you can see, are fairly white colours. You're not going to find you know, a dark black or anything here. Um, so now one other thing I wanted to change for the final game is making sure that the paddles stay on the screen. If you hold down the up key at the moment, you'll see that the paddle just keeps on going off the screen. So here, where we check to see the if the up key is pressed, check that in order to move up, we also have to do this. So this is saying and, two of these um, and symbols will say if this is true and this, then move the Y up. So if we press the up key and the Y of the paddle is larger than zero, if it's not at the very top, then we can move up. Now, for making sure that it doesn't go down the bottom of the screen, put and y plus height, so that's getting the bottom um, y of the paddle, not the top, but the bottom, is smaller than the height of the window, so flexg.height. Make sure you have flexg imported up here. Then, we will be able to move up and down. So, this will just block the paddles from... Um, you know, going outside the window. So now we can hit it, and if this paddle goes up, it won't be able to go any higher than that. I can't push it off the screen. And if this paddle goes down to the bottom, then you'll see that it can't go off the bottom there. So another change that we will add to our game is adding sound effects. So a sound effect I found on the internet just on this site here, findsounds.com, is this cork pop sound here. Just like that. It's a bit of a silly sound, but it doesn't matter what sound you use. Um, as long as it's a wave sound, it's got to be WAV. It can't be anything else like MP3. There are a few formats that work, but I know that WAV does work. So to download this uh, I'll give you a link uh, in the description of this video, but just click save link as, and then we will save it uh, as pop.wave, just like that. Now, as you will see in our downloads, we have this file, and we will copy it, and we have to paste it in our game projects file in the Pong directory, in the Assets directory, and in the Sounds directory. We will paste this file, pop.wave, and uh, it doesn't have to be in this specific location, but if you want to keep your assets organized, it's best if you do. And now we will play that sound. So let's do that by, let's play this sound when it hits the paddle, just when we change the color. So just put here flixg.sound.play. You can play music here, but obviously this is just a one-off sound effect. And then this takes um, a string, assets, so the folder assets, sounds, slash pop.wave, I think it was called. Um, yep, just like that. And let's see if that works. going on we're not seeing anything ah here we go
Yep, as you can see, it made a pop noise. Pop. There we go, so our game's starting to be a little bit more fun. Now, the paddles move rather slow at the moment, so let's just quickly speed them up, just by changing that to be a sway. Um, so what else can we do? Let's make it even more fun by adding a screen shake when the ball uh, hits a side of the screen. So to do that, we just need to put flexg.camera.shake and it's really simple. So let's make it so that if it bounces against, mm, when it bounces, bounces against the paddle, we'll put a little bit of a camera shake. Um, flexg dot camera dot shake so that's getting the active camera and then shaking it um, so let's set it to be an intensity um, these are rather sensitive numbers so let's just put it really small like 0 0.01 and we will make it shake for just a tiny bit just for 0 0.1 of a second just like that so really quickly and we're also going to make it shake when it hits the bottom and the top of the screen. So see here where we make it bounce against the bottom and the top? Here we will just make it... And we might even play that sound effect when it hits the bottom and the top. Here where we play this sound effect, you can just copy and paste that. So uh, when it hits the top and the bottom of the screen and it bounces back down, it's also shaking the screen a little bit and playing the pop noise. The great thing about Hexflexor is because it's so easy to use, um, just throwing things like random sound effects can really be easy in your game. Whoops. <laughs> there we go, I'm liking this. Liking the screen shake. And I think we should keep it so that it bounces against the bottom with a sound effect. So, I think we're pretty much done. One other thing I just wanted to do was make it so that if one player scores, let's say, maybe a number like five times, um, then it's um, game over and we come up with a little text message saying um, player left or player right um, won. Just like that. So, go back to your play state. And you'll see the code that we used to generate the score text. So here where you've got this text, you can just put their win text. And that's of a type flex text. Like that. And here where we create the other text, let's actually just copy and paste this whole text thing just to save time. And let's change it from score text win text just like that and so this will center the text but we don't want it directly at the top because that would overlap with the score text so instead we will put um, let's put it uh, so let's make the Y so this is X and Y of course um, halfway down the screen so flex G dot height divided by 2 and then here we don't actually want it to be visible at first, so it doesn't really matter what we put here. So let's just put player 1. But the player will never actually see that text, so it doesn't matter. Now, what we want to do is we want to remember this is what's happening when we create the game. So we just want to set this to be invisible. So wintext.visible should equal false. That's because um, we shouldn't show this until the player is done. So in our, um, when one of these uh, players score, let's just put a little if statement here. If white score, there are cleaner ways of doing this, but this is fine for now. And then we'll put a variable up here for the max score that they need to win the game. That is just for convenience. So there max score which is of a type int the integer and we'll just set that to be five so they need five to win the game and then down here if right score is 
um, larger than what's what did I call it? Max score, I think. Yeah, max score. Then the white player has obviously won. Um, so we can set. Uh, where is it? The score text be visible. Score text dot visible equals true. So now we can see it in the middle of the screen, and let's change the text to be score text equals. Uh, this is if the um, white player has won because the balls went off the left of the screen, so their score has been increased. And it's larger than the max score. So let's just say white player one. Hooray. Um, just like that. And then we can actually copy and paste this whole if statement down here and say if left left score larger than max score and change this to be left. Now what we will do is um Let's just say after a delay of, yeah, we'll just say after a delay of five seconds, the game restarts. So you might remember from when we reset the ball, we can create a timer just with this code here. So let's copy and paste it just for convenience. But we have to remember to import Flex Timer. So we can just put that here. We'll adjust this in a second. Um, import. Flexal dot util dot flex timer and then we will set it to take mm, four seconds and then we will reset the game after four seconds of showing that. So we can just say reset game. I think that should work fine. And then we will copy and paste this. It's not good that we've got all this duplicated code twice, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter that much. It's such a simple Pong game, you know, our main play state class is only still less than 120 lines, so it doesn't really matter that much. If you really wanted to clean it up, you could have had both of these methods inside the paddle class, but it doesn't really matter. Um, string should be flex text. Oh, right, so score text. That's referring to the text field. We have to actually actually change the text in it. So that should fix that error. Now when it hits it, it bounces. And let's just make one player lose uh, five times and see if it works. Bit of a tedious way of testing, but there's worse. <laughs> As you can see, like I showed you before, the colors that it's generating because of that method that we use with, with the H, um, HSV, uh, it's always generating a different shade of color, but it's always going to be bright. Now, it should, maybe at the next turn, yeah, I think it's because we said if it's larger, not if it is, that score, you know, 5. Now, oh, we've got this text here, right player 1. Now, it was barely visible, but it did show up. So, let's change a few things around. Let's first make sure that the text is white, because we couldn't see it then. Um... Like that, and uh, yeah, we need to make sure that it's in the center of the screen too. So where we have this doesn't look like it's working. That's actually, huh? Why isn't that working? Zero. I can't just set this to be 300 for now. So you need 6 to win the game. But I think we're pretty much done to be honest.
Um, let's just try and make sure this works. One thing you could do if you wanted to set yourself a challenge is make sure that this text here, the score text, always matches up with the colour by using um, the flex utils, the flex colour utils, sorry, to invert the colour um, that we have our background. It wouldn't be that hard to do, but I don't think it really matters for now. Or you could set it to white if you just wanted it to be easily readable, no matter what the colour, like these paddles. And next time it should um, it should end the game. White player won. Yay. Um, and then four seconds later. Yeah. So one thing you'll notice is during those four seconds, the ball still moved. So let's actually just say um, when we show them that the left player won, we'll just say ball dot velocity dot set. So freeze the ball. Don't let it have any speed. Just so that for those four seconds, the ball doesn't go moving off to the right. So now let's look at our final product of this tutorial series. We've made a fully working Pong game, and it's probably even fancier than the original. Love that sound effect, the boop. Let's see if it works. Two, three. If you wanted, when you reset the game, you could um, reset that background colour. That's not that important. Now, left player one. Yay. And then, there we go. I think we've got a pretty much working game. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, you could take it wherever you wanted. You could make a main menu with states. You could, you know, you could do anything with this. You could, you could make four paddles instead of two and then make it so that, um, you know, you've got extra controls. You could add controller support for Xbox or PS3. And you can do that with Hexflixel very easily. The docs for Hexflixel are very cool. So if you wanted to, you could just read up on that. Um, also, you can change the volume of Hexflexor with the up and down keys if you didn't know that. Not the up and down keys, the plus and minus. So I hope you've enjoyed this series on how to make a Pong game. I've had a lot of fun making it. In the future, I'll be making probably more advanced tutorials. Um, you know, a lot more complex than Pong. I'm not entirely sure what I'll do yet, but I'm sure they'll be interesting. I'm also aware that the quality of these videos hasn't exactly been great. The audio doesn't sound amazing. So, because of the static and everything. So, I might be starting up a blog. I'm not sure about that. As always, if you want to contact me, you can just um, send me a message via Twitter with at 5mixer. And that's the end of this tutorial. So, I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching.